Okay, this is a quick lesson on using Windows to become a, an SMTP routing relay server for email. Um, Windows, to, since I think way back when, it's always had IIS, and in IIS there's always been this component which was originally used by Exchange called SMTP. Um, and the SMTP virtual server inside can be used to relay email. In our case, we have this old medical messaging system that can only talk port 25 unauthenticated to what they're trying to talk to, which is Comcast email. Recently, Comcast has upgraded email and does not support Clear 25 anymore. You have to, if you're going to log in as an account, you have to log in and you have to encrypt your data using TCP 587, which is TLS. So what we can do is we can put this server in the middle to offer as a relay. What it's going to do is it's going to receive the clear text 25 um, into a, uh, an SMTP virtual server, and that'll be cleared, but it will be filtered so that only the IP address of the sending medical device can get in there and use that because it doesn't use the username or password. And then it goes into this pickup folder and these are the folders that make up an SMTP virtual server. And then it is sent back out on SMTP TCP 587 TLS and authenticated and encrypted to Comcast so they're happy they get what they want. So for the cost of an operating system or using an existing one that you have, you can do this. When you install the SMTP virtual server, it comes in as part of IIS. So you have to load IIS onto the server. Um, you want to make sure you're not using these ports to begin with. And you can you want to make sure you pretty much have a static IP on the box. The folders pick up Q, drop, and bad mail are the default folders that show up when you install this product. I'll explain them quickly. Pickup is where new email goes that the SMTP virtual server is going to pick up and try to deliver. If there's a hiccup or anything or delay or uh, for some reason can't deliver it, it will put it back into the Q folder where it will retry. Okay, so if something's not able to be delivered immediately and has to be retried, it sits in the queue folder. If for some reason that queue folder fails and it cannot ever deliver it and times out the number of retries or whatever expires, it will then be shoved into the bad mail for undeliverable and stay there indefinitely. So the bad mail is just one folder you need to periodically check and clean out. The drop folder is the final and fourth folder. And the drop folder is for local email that is being delivered to this as an email server. Now, typically, you're not going to have Windows 2000 as a, as using this IIS SMTP server be your real server for your clients to connect to. So the drop folder is usually um, very uh, fictitious. And we're going to make up a phony domain name um, for the drop to receive, something like uh, you know, fake network dot local. So this diagram just kind of shows you what we're going to be doing. Now for today, I have built a, um, let me just power this up, a 2012 uh, R2 server that is basically <clears throat> a standard install of 2012 and I've only installed VMware tools to make it work. Now, I don't have a static IP on here. It's kind of a virtual machine. I'm doing it in a lab, but you would have a static machine. So the first thing we need to do is we need to add roles and features. So I'll click that. Go next, next, next. And then we're going to go into here, and we are going to find the uh, web IIS. We're going to click that, and it's going to ask us to put the tools in. We're going to agree to that. So we'll go next. Now when we get into this part of it, we want to look down and see if there's any components that we want. And one of the components we need is the SMTP server component. So we're going to go ahead and click that. And you'll notice that that's going to put in the old legacy IIS management tools, which is the tool that you use to manage the SMTP server since nobody's really used this for years. So it's not really something you typically uh, find in new tools. So we'll allow it to add those features as well. Um, and we'll go next, and we will go next, and it's going to ask us some of the things that we want in IIS, and we can, you can disable some of this. We're just going to leave this generically go because um, we're installing it for a lab. You can tweak it if you want, but if you leave those 
pieces on there, it should uh, work relatively well. Now, obviously, I didn't name my server or join it to a domain, but you'd want to have done all that before you go through this process. I have to let that go through. It didn't take very long, just a few minutes. Um, so I'll close. And we'll go up to Tools. And we will find the IIS 60 Manager, not the one you typically use, the old one. I'll minimize this out of the way. And it's actually quite simple to do this. So here's the server. It installs a default SMTP server to begin with. Uh, you can right click and you can add new SMTP virtual servers. And for example, I could have one on one IP address hosting a specific port back and forth. Let's say inbound on 25 and outbound on something and this one doing the same thing but on a different IP. or you could have different SMTP virtual servers host on different incoming ports and different outgoing. So we'll take this default one, but I'm going to right name and re, uh, right click and rename it to uh, let's go SMTP Comcast Relay. Now this is pretty simple. The first thing you need to do is go into domains, and the domain name is if you recall when we look at these folders. The, the drop folder is not where you're losing data, it's where it's putting data to be retrieved by an Outlook client, which we're never going to have. This is never really serving Outlook clients and nobody uses that anymore, so it's fictitious. So what I typically do is I rename the name to something like this, fake.local. And the, what that tells it is the only email that will go into drop is stuff, stuff that is email address to someone at fake.local, which doesn't exist. So this kind of makes this folder uh, functionless. So that's the number one thing we got to do. Uh, you can actually um, not do a lot in that interface. So the rest of the settings are in here, and we go through and we right click and go to properties. And it's fairly simple. We're going to handle on the general and the access and message the inbound, and then we're going to handle the outbound and the other. So if you were going to tie it to a specific interface or IP and you had multiples, you could set it up here. And there's under advanced, you can actually customize the port that you're listening on. By default, it should pick 25. But like I said, if you're going to have three different relays and they're all listening on the same IP address but different ports, you'd have to customize the second one. For us, this is fine. We're going to listen on 25, and this is configuring this side of the connection the inbound mess medical messaging thing. Um, you can limit the number of connections if you want. You can enable logging. We kind of recommend that. Um, on this screen, we're going to go to access. Under the authentication, we're going to allow anonymous, and that should be set by default. So that there's no authentication on that side from here in, but we want to filter by IP. So we're going to pretend that the IP over here is 10.10.10.10. .10 .10 .10. And I'm going to say connection control, connection. Select which computers may access this virtual server. And I'll say only the host listed above. And I'm going to add a single computer. And I'll hit OK. And this limits who can use this so that I'm not worried about somebody um, using this and relaying email. So this is the ability to access the IP and port. This is whether you're allowed to relay off the box. So you're going to have to do the same thing, only the list above, you never want to really do this one. Um, and I'll hit add, and I'll put the same IP address in, oops, there we go. And that tells it this one's allowed to connect, and it's also allowed to relay, means it's going to be allowed to send email in that is not destined for fake.local, that's destined for something else, and it's going to relay it out. Messages, um, you want to uh, set this to something appropriate. I don't recommend unlimiting this because then if somebody goofs up on the messaging side and makes a huge email, it can crash the relay. So typically you'll want to set this to something. And if you're not sure, just go ahead and put a one in front of the message size. Um, there's, make this one match. And I think the rest of this will be fine. Um, you can send non-delivery reports, but if something goes wrong on the med med medical messaging side, you can actually end up uh, doing some bad stuff. And it does show you where the folders are for bad mail. So typically, I'll leave this non-delivery undone. 
On the delivery side, this deals with the outbound. So some timeouts and stuff can be left to their defaults. And this is where we're going to be configuring the TLS side, the SMTP 587 or uh, whatever your port is. And we can configure outbound security. And this will use basic authentication, your Comcast username, and then the password, whatever it is. And you'll click TLS encryption because I think they require that. Um, it's different for different vendors. Um, I've had Comcast, I think, works with TLS, but if it doesn't log in the first time, I'll click this and then uh, try it again. So this is where we're setting the login for sending. We haven't told it where to send to yet, but this is just what credentials it will use. Hit OK. Then I click Outbound Connections, and these are where your other uh, timeouts are, um, which you can pretty much leave at the default. The only thing you need to customize here is the port. We need to give it the right TCP port for the outbound connection. Hit OK. Under Advanced, you can see um, some generic stuff. If you um, want, want, you can change the name here as what it sh shows out. I don't know, maybe relay.mydomain.com or whatever you want it to be. So this is what it's going to appear like. The smart host is where we have to tell it where to send on the Comcast side. So uh, sometimes if you're working with a vendor and they give you an IP address to send to, that's fine on Comcast. It's going to be something that they give you that you've been trying to connect to all the time before, like um, smtp.comcast.net. So I'm going to set it at that. Whatever yours is, is it, it, that's what you got to put in here. And we recommend that you use the DNS settings. Just make sure your server is configured um, correctly. So. Uh, that's all you have to set there. So that's where it's going. This is how it's logging in. You don't have any LDAP routing and the security should be the default. So that's pretty much it. Hit OK and my relay is up and running. And if I'm curious, I can go to a command prompt and I can do a netstat -a -n and find 425 to make sure it's listening on port 25. And that means it's listening as a listening service on 25. To prove it to you, I will telnet in uh, to my port on 25. And I don't have telnet installed. Let me do that real quick. Install telnet. So again, netstat-a-n. We're finding for 25. Um, I forgot the word find. And you can see it's listening to test it. I'm going to tell that into my IP address or my loopback on 25. And I get a uh, prompt, which means I got a connection. If I type H, oops, it timed out. H E L O, it's not going to let me do it from the own box. But you can see you're getting a connection, which is good. And you can see. I can show the connections that are sitting there waiting that I made. So it's actually, here's the listener that listens for connections. Here were the four connections I just set off and they're time waiting to expire. So we're good to go. Go back then to your medical messaging pointed at this box and it should forward on the way. Just make sure the TLS side, the 587, is set up and tested before you repoint your medical messaging. That way it works. Hope that helped. Enjoy the video. Bye-bye.